Good morning. So now what we're going to do is start talking about uh, section 22.3 uh, in chapter 22. And the title given in the text is called Vibrating Air Columns. Uh, another possible title uh, for this section could be Standing Sound Waves because that's what we're going to be talking about. You, know, you remember back in chapter 21 we spent some time uh, discussing um, and creating standing, sa standing waves in a string. So now what we're going to be doing is talking about standing sound waves in a pipe. And there are two different kinds of pipes that we'll talk about. One would be a closed pipe. So here's, here's a pipe that is closed at one end and open at the other. That's the one we'll talk about first. That's called a closed pipe. And then an open pipe is open at both ends. So we'll, we'll review that again as, as we talk. So the first thing we'll, we're going to uh, deal with is a closed pipe, closed at one end. And just like with a standing wave in a string, we'll be developing a frequency equation uh, for the frequency of a standing sound wave in a closed pipe. So let's step through the development of that equation. So we'll be spending most of our time here on page 446. Okay, so I'll be recreating the uh, sketches that are at the top of page 446. So, now, what are some examples, what are some real life examples of, of pipes that might develop uh, standing sound waves? Well, again, as with the um, standing waves in a string, you have, you have some musical uh, equivalents here. So, a pipe organ, uh, a bassoon, a flute, those would essentially be pipes uh, that can develop standing uh, sound waves. So uh, let's first start doing some sketches. There would be a sketch of a closed pipe. And we will label the length of the pipe with the letter L. And the very top sketch on page 446 illustrates the simplest standing wave uh, that you could get with a closed pipe. So, we'll do a sketch here. Now, what does that represent? <clears throat> so, you remember um, earlier in the chapter, we showed how you could display a sound wave in this fashion. Even though a sound wave is a longitudinal wave, it can be displayed uh, in a way that it makes it look like a transverse wave if your vertical axis is, is pressure. So that's what you're seeing here in this sketch of the closed pipe. So you're seeing, for, uh, for a standing wave, pressure. So you'll see you have high pressure at the open end and no pressure at the closed end. And we also will use several of the terms that we used back with, uh, in chapter 21. So the closed the closed end of this uh, pipe will always represent a node, and the open end, the open end will be an anti-node. So you could say that the uh, the closed end acts very similar to the fixed end of a string for uh, when we were looking at the standing waves in a string. Now we have to 
uh, what we're first going to do is uh, figure out what part of a wavelength are we seeing here, much like we did uh, <clears throat> back in chapter 21. So for this standing wave, how much of a full wavelength are we seeing? Remember we said that for a standing wave in a string, for a standing wave in a string, one loop represents represented a half of a wavelength. So let's I'm going to continue this sketch as if the pipe was longer. What if So you can see from that sketch that you're with this simple standing sound wave, we're only seeing one fourth of a wavelength. And then you see one fourth of a wavelength here and a half of a wavelength there. So really all we're seeing, if you want to use terms, a term from chapter 21, we're just seeing like half of a loop. And we're able to see that because, again, we have an open, the, the pipe has an open end, which is an anti-node. So in this case, um, the length of the pipe is equal to one-fourth of a wavelength. And if we solve this expression for wavelength, that would be 4L. So we're just using algebra to solve that expression for wavelength. All right, so let's do two more of these standing waves so we can see a trend uh, in the wavelength expression. Another possible standing wave you could get with a closed pipe would look like this. We'll label the length of the pipe L. So now you're seeing, in this standing wave, you're seeing a half of a wavelength and a quarter of a wavelength. So we could say that the length of the pipe is equal to three-fourths of a wavelength. Once again, if we solve this expression for wavelength, it's equal to 4L over 3. <clears throat> and then let's take a look at one more. The next possible standing sound wave would be, would look like this. pipe's not getting shorter, I'm just trying to edit my sketch. These are a little difficult to draw. And you can see, I'm just re again recreating the sketches at the top of page 446. So length of the pipe, L, so we have a half of a wavelength, half of a wavelength, one-fourth of a wavelength. So it's one full wavelength plus a plus a quarter. Uh, we'll express it as a fraction. That would be equal to five-fourths. So, so the length of the pipe is equal to five-fourths of a wavelength. Solve this for wavelength, and that's equal to 4L over 5. So those are our wavelength expressions for those three standing waves. And you can see a trend developing here. So I have permission from the math instructor to place a 1 in the denominator 
for our first standing wave uh, without mathematically changing that expression. So now you can see that the denominators are 1, 3, and 5. So our general expression for wavelength then becomes 4L over N, where N only exists as odd whole numbers. And for units, just like we um, just like we saw in the previous chapter, for units, since this is wavelength, your units will be meters per cycle. So once again, the n value takes on the units of cycles. All right, so the reason that we came up with an expression for wavelength is we'll do the very same thing we did with the standing waves in a string. Our, our goal here is to develop an equation for the frequency of a standing sound wave. So our next step is we have to recognize with a, with a standing sound wave this is a periodic wave. It's just not one, one wave. So again it's periodic so you have wave after wave after wave. So the periodic wave equation is in play here. For periodic waves, we saw that speed is equal to frequency times wavelength. And we're going to use this equation as the basis for our frequency equation. So frequency then is equal to speed divided by wavelength. Then we're going to take our wavelength, general wavelength expression, and we're going to plug it in to the numerator or the denominator of this expression. So you get frequency is equal to speed divided by 4L over N. And we're, you recognize that we're dividing by a fraction, so what we're going to do is is um, take this equation and multiply the numerator by the inverse of the denominator. So you're left with frequency is equal to NV over 4L. And once again, with only the only the odd N values are available. And you can see that uh, equation expressed uh, down uh, at the bottom half of page 446. And this again is only for a closed pipe. The, an open pipe will be a little different. So let's uh, go ahead and show how this equation is used by looking at the example uh, 22.4 on page 447. In this example, you're asked to calculate the frequencies uh, for standing wave in a closed pipe. You're given that the pipe is 12 centimeters long. Um, you're given the air temperature, and you're asked to solve the frequencies of the uh, fundamental standing wave and the first two overtones. So let's back up first, uh, back to our, our frequency equation. Here's a point that I did not make earlier. Okay, so NV divided by 4L. So where does V come from? Remember we saw with a standing wave in a string that this was the speed of a wave in a, in a string. Well, we're not dealing with a string now. The, the medium 
for the standing wave is air. So in order to get the speed in this equation, this is the speed of sound in air, and earlier in the chapter we already saw that that was 331 meters per second plus 0.6 meters per second per Celsius degree times the Celsius temperature. So that's why you're, you're given the air temperature in this example 22.4 so you can calculate the speed of sound in air for this uh, problem. And one other piece of information we need before we can uh, move on is if you were asked to calculate the frequencies of the fundamental standing wave and the first two overtones. So we need a table of n values that you can choose from uh, in order to solve this problem. So let's put that table up here. And this is a table that you'll need to have when you uh, have available to you when you get to a test. This table will be a little more complicated than for standing waves in a string. So the first, the first column is the n values. The next column is the overtones related to a closed pipe. Then you also have overtones related to an open pipe, and we'll leave that column blank for now. So n equals 1 represents the fundamental frequency. Now also remember for a closed pipe only the odd ends are available. So the first overtone will have an n value of n equals 3. Second overtone is n equals 5. Third overtone, n equals 7. The harmonic, the harmonic column will be the same as for standing wave in the string. Okay, so we can continue now with this uh, example. So in this example, the length of the pipe is 12 centimeters or 0.12 of a meter.
And we're first going to solve the, for the fundamental standing wave uh, for n equals 1. You're given air temperature of 30, so substitute 30 into your speed equation, and you will get 331 plus 18, or 349 meters per second. That will go up into your frequency equation. So for n equals 1, we'll put in one cycle. The speed is 349 meters per second divided by 4. And we showed that the length of the pipe would be 0.12 of a meter. Now for units, you can see that the meters meter units cancel out and you're left with cycles per second, which is frequency. So if you finish those calculations, uh, then you'll get uh, 727 cycles per second, or you can express as 727 hertz. And I'm going to put a little subscript 1 uh, on the frequency term, just, to, just so we're clear that that's uh, the frequency for an n equals 1 standing wave. The problem that also goes on to ask you to calculate the frequency for the first two overtones as well. So another equation that's still in play from the last term, or from the last chapter, excuse me, is that the frequency for any n value is n times the fundamental frequency. So you remember that one. So rather than doing the calculation over again at different n values, you can just uh, find the n values from the table multiplied by the fundamental frequency uh, and you'll have it. So for the first overtone, we can see from the table that n equals 3. So the frequency for n equals 3 is 3 times the fundamental frequency, or 3 times 727 hertz. And then for the second overtone, uh, n equals 5. So the frequency for n equals 5 is 5 times the fundamental frequency, or 5 times, 5 times 727, and that gives you 3,635. Alright, so that uh, shows you how to apply this uh, equation. You'll also notice in that example, uh, as we discussed earlier in the chapter, that the, the way that the textbook is using to calculate speed of sound in air is using degrees Kelvin, uh, but uh, we'll just continue to use the, the equation that we've been uh, using a little bit easier for us. All right. So let's give you some homework problems to uh, practice. Okay. So these would be problems nine. Nine, ten, and thirteen. So 
So those would be end of chapter problems uh, back on page 460. All right, make sure you uh, keep this table in your notes, and as when we get to open pipes, then we'll uh, fill in the rest of the end value information. So here's a quick demonstration of a standing wave in a closed pipe. So we have a 53 centimeter long closed pipe, open at one end, closed at the other end. So what we'll do is take a, uh, a tuning fork, this is a 480 hertz tuning fork, strike it, and hopefully on the video you'll be able to sense um, you'll be able to hear the standing wave. You should hear an amplification of the sound by the pipe. 